Hey guys and girls, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity with myself, Lewis. Hope you're brilliant, having yourself a great day as always. So we're going to start working today on a little bit of blood magic. It's been some time since I've done this stuff with blood magic and I thought it could be a laugh. Plus, you know, this is the magical area. We have Batania, we have Farmcraft. We need blood magic, and after that, we can probably go into some witchery. But I got to, you know, I got to kind of figure out where I want to, where I want to put that. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking maybe we'll do like over that way somewhere, but who knows? Now, before we do this, let's have a look at our node because it has been getting fed. I, I haven't been able to leave my computer on as long as I would have liked, but it is getting fed nonetheless. If we have a come down here, you better see that we're currently sitting at. Some of them are around about 150 to 30, some of them are about 230, so we're starting to get there, slowly but surely. I haven't decided on the size that I want to, you know, grow it to before I start doing anything, but I'm thinking kind of around about between 800 to 1,000 of each node. Some of them are going to get there a little bit faster than the others, but that's fine. But overall, it's looking pretty good. And it's starting to look pretty big, isn't it? It's starting to grow. Eventually, once we get it to about a 1,000 mark, it's going to be probably protruding out of here quite easily. So, yeah, it's going to look great. It's going to look insane. <laughs> but let's go on with some blood magic. Now, the first thing that we need to do when it comes to being a blood mage is we need to make ourselves a sacrificial altar where we can store all of our blood and then we can mix it up with different objects to be able to create different things. Now, I generally don't tend to, uh, as I like to put it, cheese mods. You know, when it comes to Batania, I use Batania. I've never, uh, never ever wanted to use the old um, lava trick for producing matter. Well, you can't really do that anymore anyway, because it's got nerfed, but yeah. I've, n I've never done that. I've never really wanted to do that. I believe I'm very much a big believer in playing a mod the way it's supposed to be played. Except for blood magic. <laughs> You know, I haven't got I haven't really got much of a uh, argument for that one. You could say that, you know, you're meant to do it the way it's meant to be played. You, you know, you're totally right. But I find the uh, grinding side of blood magic horribly boring. I don't mind the mod, and we should probably go for it, but I, the grinding side just literally wants me to jump off this cliff. So, we are going to kind of cheese it a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> You know, if you want to have a moan, have a moan, but it's uh, it's a thing. So, what we need to do before we uh, do anything is we need to lay down the basis for our blood magic. And that's going to be to make ourselves an altar. We're going to use one of these blood owers. So, we're going to require some gold, some diamonds, some furnaces, all of those lovely things. So, let's start by making a furnace. Here we go. And we'll, I'll show you how we're going to kind of, uh, you know, cheese it in a second. So, let's get ourselves the altar up and we'll grab one of you. Cool, cool. And we're going to place you right where this brick is over here. I'll go through what this thing in my inventory is in a second as well, because I'm sure some of you wonder what it is. But there we go. That's our altar. So now we can, you know, we can make ourselves bleed into our altar, and then we can collect the blood, and we can use the blood to do blood-related gubbins. <laughs> Now, uh, let's go over this quickly. This is a talisman of nourishment, which I got from Falmic Exploration, and I'm using this at the minute because it's handy. So, I currently hold 98 food points and 30 saturation points. When you place it in your inventory, any food that you have in your inventory instantly starts consuming, and then it gives it to you over a amount of time. So, uh, 98 food points was about 20 toast, I think, or maybe a little bit less than that, because toast is fairly good, isn't it? So... It was kind of like that. And that's going to, you know, this is hopefully going to play a key role in how we're going to do our blood magic today. Now, another thing that we are going to need is going to be a way of sacrificing ourselves. to start with. We're going to start with a sacrificial orb because this is the first tier of uh, orb that we're going to use. And it's going to give us this guy. So, there we go. Good stuff. And we can now sacrifice ourselves. So, if we come over here and we click, there we go. You can see I lost a heart of life. And that's gone down into there. How cool is that? I don't even know if I'm actually wearing an amulet that's going to help me. No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we'll let the uh, life slowly come up. But you'll see that my um, food in here will go down and my toast in here will go down as well. Because obviously as we go lower in life, we need food to replenish that. So, it's going to do that. Now, blood magic got changed a little bit in that loads of people use the Batania flowers <laughs> and proper cheesed it so that they had regeneration free. Now, what happens when you have anything over regular regeneration is you get hunger to try and counteract that. So, we could, you know, we could use the same flower. We could set up some sort of regeneration thing and we would get 
hunger, which would use a load of our toast. And to be honest, I don't, I don't like wasting toast. It's a precious material. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and get round both of these. And I was looking in my NEI because... First thing I do when I don't understand something because I come to NEI. And I basically just have a little looky scene here to see what I can find. So we had things like potions of healing. We had the vials from uh, from Britannia. We had the health syringes from Mine Factory Loaded. I was thinking of setting up a uh, health syringe dispenser. You can use autonomous activators to health syringe yourself. So I was thinking of doing that. Um, we've also got things like uh, healers, but they're always disabled. And the Amulet of Healing. Now, the Amulet of Healing isn't bad. I've already got one of those, but it doesn't do it that fast. It's pretty slow. It just gives you regular regeneration, which doesn't help out a great deal. So, I was thinking of, uh, you know, what else, what else can we do? So, let's have a look at maybe uh, health, healing. Let's have a look at regeneration. And this is where I figured it out. <laughs> when I came in here, I found these little guys. Regeneration plus modules. So this module gives regeneration free bonus when used in the environmental controller. And we also have a, one that's just regular regeneration. So let's have a looky-see at the environmental controller. And this is what me led me to think we can probably do this with one machine. So the environmental controller, control the environment around you with various modules. These are modules for things like regeneration speed. So we place this down, we give it power, and we put in these upgrades, and then we get the effect of the upgrade around us, depending on how large the radius we set. So if we use one of these, we'll get regeneration free. And then all we've got to do is we've got to sort out the food problem because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to constantly be hungry because that's going to kind of suck. But there isn't really a way of getting rid of the hunger. Well, there is. We can use the, we can use the uh, remedium from uh, Falmic Exploration. No, not Falmic Exploration. Falmic Tinkerer. But, and that does remove the hunger effect over and over again, but it's only going to last like 30 seconds because it, it gets, it's got durability on it, so it breaks real fast. So there is that. But in here, we have got a saturation plus module. So this module gives saturation free bonus when used in the environmental controller. So uh, what I'm thinking is if we get the health boost, we'll then get hunger, but we'll have saturation free, which should hopefully counteract it. Now, I don't know if it works with the talisman of nourishment because I haven't tried it out yet. So for that reason, I've bought myself another stack of toast as well, just in case it does get a little bit, you know, a little bit funky. With us. <laughs> there is a few other items that we can use. There was a, um, I'm not too sure what the name of it was now, but there was another item that gave me saturation and, uh, and a decent amount of uh, the old hungers. But I want to try this one out first to see how it goes. And if this doesn't work, then we'll find another way of doing it. So let's start by making ourselves, actually, let's start by putting some music on. It's always the most important thing. There we go. And let's start by making ourselves one of these environmental controllers because it's going to be pretty important. Now, I think I have most of the stuff in it, so we'll go with making one of these first. And that didn't want to give it to me. <laughs> let's try doing this. Now, let's take you out. There we go. Cool, cool. The gold coins are basically gold uh, nuggets in the Forge or Dictionary. But for some reason, this mod doesn't want to doesn't want to do that. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a environmental majiga. Uh, what are we missing? We are missing a block of iron. There we go. And a block of gold. Oh, gold. <laughs> there we are. Cool beans. One environmental controller. Brilliant. Now, we're also going to want a way to power this. It's going to be pretty important. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to use a pressure plate because that seems pretty handy. So, we'll make a pressure plate. Actually, you know what we can do, which is even cooler, is we can get ourselves. Let's see if we can find it in here. There it is. We will use, because we're super fancy, if we go into my building bag. A carpenter's pressure plate because <laughs> it just looks a little bit that but you know it looks a bit fancier doesn't it so we'll go with that cool cool all right so we got a way to activate so we don't want the power always going out do we that's a bit of a waste so we'll have that and we're also going to need a tesseract did I bring a tesseract with me I did brilliant and a cable which is gonna be fairly good so let's use a uh, we don't want to use copper 
Let's see if what metals we have in here. That would do. Let's use lead. And glass. Oh, maybe it's the other way around. Is that not it? I thought this is how we make leadstone cables. Lead steering. Oh, we need redstone. Okay, that's fine. Lead steering. There we go. And the main reason I'm making redstone, uh, leadstone, instead of any of the better cables, because, you know, we can make pretty much any of the cables, this thing doesn't need that much power. So I don't want to go sending it tons and tons of power inside the cable, because then it'll run for longer than we want it to. So we want to try and limit the amount of power that we're supplying to it, because I think it's going to use about 50 RF, whereas these transfer 200. We can check that. There is a way of checking that. I did make a thing to help me check that. Uh, or maybe I didn't uh, make it, but it's it's definitely there. <laughs> so, let's figure out where we're going to place this now. So, I'm thinking we're going to do it kind of here. So, I can come up to the altar, start sacrificing, and all is going to be good. So, what we're going to do is we're going to break down into here a little bit. And we're going to place our Tesseract around here. So, let's put you there. Cool, cool. And we'll have our guy coming out of here. Oh, where did that go? Oh, that's my thing. Oops. <laughs> Oops. All right, we'll place you. Fine, we'll do it there. Why not? And then we'll have our environmental controller. And we want to set this as well. So let's set this to uh, high. Yep, I still got that in. Good stuff. And we'll pop you right there. Cool beans. All right, so that shouldn't be doing anything for us. The radius we're going to set down to five because we only need it when we're right here, don't we? So we'll do that. And that should do the trick for us. So if we come over here and we fill you back in and then we put down our pressure plate and this guy, there we go. We should be able to stand on this. And it should work for us. Yeah, looks good. Looks good to me. I don't know if we can place it there. I, don't, I think this takes up that block as well. Oh, it doesn't. Oh. All right. We might need to move some of this then. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. We can do that. So, let's grab. If I got my wrench on me. I have. Let's pop you a little bit over. I think that would still work having it there, but I, I want it kind of, uh, I want it a little bit closer if we can have that. So the pressure plate's going to go here. We want our Tesseract right here, and that should uh, that should do the trick for us. It should have saved all of the gubbins inside, so we should be pretty good. So let's pop you back down over here. Let's grab this one under here as well. Here we are. Good stuff. And we'll pop you right there, and that there, and that there. <laughs> nice. All right. So hopefully this is going to do the trick for us. So when we step on the pressure plate, it's going to activate the Tesseract. The Tesseract will send the power to the environmental controller. All right. So next up, we're going to require the upgrades to place inside our environmental controller. These are kind of, these are pretty vital. <laughs> now, we needed to get ourselves some blood. And for each one of these environmental upgrades, we required different types of blood. So for the regeneration module, I needed Iron Golem. And for the saturation, I needed Zambeth. And I've gone and got those, which is good. I think they might be inside here. No. Where did I put these? Think. Where would I put? I, oh, I think I put them in here. Yeah, good stuff. All right. So to get these, all you have to do, make the syringes. Syringes are mega cheap. And then you just go and hit the uh, mob with the syringe. It will attack you because it hurts the mob doing it. And you don't you don't uh, right click, you actually punch it. So uh, that's how you get the blood. And it takes a few goes to get one up to full and then you can go from there. The good thing is one iron golem is enough to get three of these. I needed uh, like two to three zombies with these. The problem is... Uh, the zombies try and kill you so it's uh, you know <laughs> you have to kind of sometimes kill them back but that is that so let's start by making 
Let's have a look inside our environmental. We're going to craft ourselves a regeneration plus module. So first things first, we're going to need one of these. So let's put in our iron golem. This will give us our regeneration module. And then we're going to need this plus two more. Will give us the regeneration. Oh no, they're zombie ones, aren't they? We need iron golem. There we go. Gives us regeneration plus module. And now we're going to do the same for the saturation. So I haven't actually tried this with the saturation module, so I don't know if it's going to work that well. If it doesn't, I'm sure there's another way we can do this. But for now, I think it should do the trick. So two of those gives us another module. So let's go and give this a try and see how it works. As soon as we're near the altar, it should figure out that we've got regeneration and be like, Nope, you're having hunger. <laughs> that should be how it works. So we'll pop you in there. There we go. And there should be a little bit of power in there. Yeah, there is some uh, particles that come out the top of it. You can see it kind of there. That do its thing. There we go. Your high regeneration has caused you to become hungry. So, and we've got saturation. Now, I don't know if this works with the talisman of nourishment. But it doesn't look like our hunger's going down. Which is pretty cool. Let's see if this is going down real fast, though. 98 food points, 21 saturation points. I'm just going to keep an eye on this to see if it does it. I'm going to make sure we give it power. Oh, wrong button. And let's give it a go, shall we? Uh, 98, 21. 98, 21. Oh, it looks like it's working. Yeah, it's staying there. <laughs> there we go. So a nice easy way to uh, cheese the blood magic. Now, I'm sure some of you are going to be like, ah, you shouldn't be cheating. Like I said, I, dem I generally don't tend to do this with mods, but blood magic's um, progression, um, I find it very grindy, <laughs> and I don't like doing that. So there is uh, that. It seems to be working just fine, and as we step off of it, the power will stop going to it, but these guys have a really big internal buffer so we want to try and make sure that uh we're not giving it tons of you know i'm not making infinite power so i want to make sure that we're not going overboard but if we have a look inside rf tools i believe there's an item that shows us yeah an rf network monitor this is the one if we grab one of these we should be able to go and check the machine to see how much power it's actually got in it because when we click on it at the minute it doesn't really show anything for us so i believe if we shift click yeah, there we go. You can see that we've got the environmental controller. We have the leadstone flux duct and the tesseract. And this currently has all of this inside here. So it's got, you know, that's just from standing on that plate for a little while. So we really only need to quickly step on it on and off. But because the radius is so small, it's not going to be a huge difference. The hunger should wear out in a second. Is it going to run out? There we go. Yeah, you can see we've stepped away from it. All the things have disappeared. We're pretty good. It helps as well that we change the uh, radius on that to be really small, but that's pretty much that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this back in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a couple of things from Blood Magic that are going to get us started. So let's have a gander inside here. Now, the first thing is probably going to be to make ourselves a very, very low level Blood Orb, which is going to be the main thing. And this requires a Tier 1 Blood Altar, which should be what we have at the minute and it costs 2000 LP to make a weak blood orb stores raw life essence so what we're going to do is we're going to get our start of a damonde here we go and we're going to go and do some sacrificing <laughs> and hopefully it's going to do the trick for us and it requires 2000 in total so if we go over here stand on this guy we should get our regeneration there we go and we get the hunger but we've got the saturation so let's pop this guy in here and get sacrificing. Now this uh, blood orb will allow us to link ourselves to the altar and our network and supply us with LP, which is life points, uh, beyond where our altar is. It's also something we're going to use a lot later on for spells and armor and all of that good stuff. As we progress and we upgrade our altar, we'll upgrade our blood orb as well to a higher tier. But the higher tier ones require higher altars to be able to do that and some of them require higher blood orbs to start with so and this will take some time because these diamond is uh you know at this level this guy takes ages to do pretty much anything <laughs> it is pretty slow and uh yeah 
But we can see that we've got the little red things coming up, so it means that it is doing something. There we go, look! Boom! Got ourselves a weak blood orb. So first thing we need to do is link it to herself, so go ahead and do that. And now we can go ahead and we can use the weak blood orb to uh, check things. So we can like look inside the uh, inside the altar and whatnot. Which is fairly good, you know. Stores raw life essence. Current owner is me, WTF Geeks. And that is uh, our weak blood orb, which is pretty funky. Alright, so to finish up, I think the last thing we're going to make, which is going to allow us to see the current LP inside our network, is going to be our first sigil. Now, sigils are pretty cool. They allow us to do different things. They will use the LP inside our network to be able to do different stuff. So, sigil of haste, one dose of caffeine layers so that gives you a uh, haste. We have things like fast minor, elemental affinity, lava sigil. There's a few different ones, but the main one we're going to make is a divination sigil. And then maybe we'll make a sigil of holding later on. I wonder if it's still called sigil of holding. Oh, it is, yeah, yeah. So we can still do that. Sigil of holding allows us to place multiple sigils within one sigil, but the divination sigil allows us to do this. So, we're going to need to make a blank slate. It's going to be the first thing we need. So, let's get ourselves some stone from inside here. And the chances are we probably already have enough well that didn't go in the inventory <laughs> we probably already have enough lp inside our altar over here to be able to uh do this so i'm just going to kind of place that there and uh this should do the trick for us i love how as soon as i come near it we get all these good buffs just because i've been standing here this guy's probably still full it doesn't use a great deal so there's our sigil so let's go along here oh no our uh, slate and we're going to make ourselves a uh divination sigil here we go. So there's that. We need to use our blood orb and poof. One of these guys. Now what we can do with this is we can go ahead and we can see the current amount of essence. So we can see that our blood orb currently has 876 essence. If we come over to our altar, we'll see that our altar currently has 8,800 LP inside it with a capacity of 10,000. If we go and place our blood orb on there, it's going to go ahead and it's going to take the blood from our altar. It's basically like a blood battery. So if we use anything that requires LP while we're out and about, we can use our blood orb, which is pretty cool. Now, if we check our blood orb for our player, you're going to see we have 1,282, and our altar currently has 8,394. If we come along here, and we do a little sacrificing, because everyone likes a little bit of sacrificing, right? We come along and do that. And there we go. You can see the life going back up. We'll now have, instead of 8,393, we will have a grand total of 10,000, which is great. But we're obviously going to want more than that eventually. So we're going to want higher amounts of LP inside our network to make bigger things. If we have a look at making the next upgrade to our orb. So if we want to make the next one up, which would be the Apprentice Blood Orb, we would need a tier 2 and we would need 5,000 LP in there. If we're going to make a tier 2 altar, we're going to need to get ourselves some runes and finger bobs to place around it, but we'll do that in another episode. <laughs> But there we go, guys. That's going to be it for today's episode. Let's go have a little quick look at our... Oh, it looks like it's grown. <laughs> what are we on? Uh, 100. Some of them are getting near the 200 as well. 260 on the Aqua. It's looking pretty good. I'm just going to leave it going, I think. But that's going to be it for today's episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. For those of you guys that don't like cheese and the blood magic, I do apologize. But, you know, I uh, I gave my point. <laughs> it's probably it's a pretty bad one, but I gave it nonetheless. Um... And, uh, you know, it works. It's it's fun, isn't it? It allows us to progress a little bit faster. So there is that. But we'll probably do a little bit more blood magic in the next episode while we wait for the node to grow. And maybe we might check out some more of the Farmcraft goodies because there is a lot of stuff that we haven't done from the additional add-ons for Farmcraft. So we might go ahead and check those out as well. So maybe, you know, maybe a little bit of Britannia. Who knows? The world is aren't we still? We've still got witchery to do as well. And Nan's had some big updates with being able to be a werewolf and whatnot and fly monkeys and things. It sounds pretty fun. So maybe we'll check some of that out. But for now, that's it. Have yourself a great day. Have a good one as always. And bye-bye.